morning. Happy Summerween day five. I can't believe how quickly Summerween is flying. For today, it is July 11th and that only means one thing. It is the official publication day for Darcy Coates' new book, Dead of Winter. You all know if you're not new here, I absolutely love Darcy Coates' books. I've read a lot of her backlist. I'm still working my way through it, although it got harder since all of her books have been removed from Kindle Unlimited. I don't know exactly what Dead of Winter is about. I believe the basic premise is a group of friends or acquaintances going up to the mountains and being trapped in like this snowstorm situation where they are slowly hunted down one by one I think in the forest if I'm completely wrong you will definitely know that by the end of this vlog I'm gonna purchase this on Kindle and my plan is to read this in the dark and because I've been a lot busier this week than I expected just lots and lots of interviews going on I'm going to make day five something super special for Summerween, I'm going to do a 24 hour reading vlog. And I mean a legitimate 24 hour reading vlog. I will be trying to stay awake through the night for 24 hours to just read. Now the exceptions to that is that obviously I do have work to do in between those times, but I will still try my best to read and have to take a break to do an interview, etc, etc. Lots of stuff going on. But the book I'm going to read is Dead of Winter. And then I also want to read Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. This is a book that's been on my TBR for a long time. It is about this actress who is being cast in this horror film based on a book. However, the thing is this entire cast and crew was just recently replaced and apparently some chaotic shit is going on and what's happening in the book is happening in the movie which is also happening in real life. I'm super excited to read these two books. I'm going to get started with them ASAP. The whole theme of this 24 hours should be like forest horror. So we'll see. Apologies for the shitty lighting and the sound of the AC in the back. It's 90 degrees besties but I want to give you the update that I am reading Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates. I've just gotten to chapter 12 and I'll tell you this story starts right in the middle of the action. You are literally on the mountain as our main character whose name I've already forgotten is trying to escape and we've entered a murder mystery kind of one by one situation. If you see me turning this way and you see something here, that's my lamp because I'm trying to get as close to the lighting as possible. So I wanted to give you that update. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Like it is very action heavy, but at the same time, I also find myself feeling kind of bored. I imagine that things will pick up very soon. But I wanted to make sure that I told you where I'm at and how I'm feeling. It's a weird combination of like entertained, but somewhat uninterested and a little bit bored. To be fair, chapter 12 is literally like page 60 something. So not very far in. I'm going to make some more progress and then I'll give you another update in better lighting later on tonight. Wow. It's literally five minutes later. I'm going to switch over to listening to the audiobook for 13s just because I'm going to close the door. Just because I am going to play the sims to help me stay up a little bit longer and the audiobook for 13s is due back tomorrow full disclosure i am already almost done with 13s i had been reading it a few days before the readathon but it was always my intention to finish it during summerween and i'll give you the summary when i have better lighting probably even in the morning hello it is just past midnight. I wanted to give you the update that I did finish 13s and I started Ascension and got 20% of the way through, which means I'm 20% of the way through Ascension and 20% of the way through, why well, did I just blank on that? Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates. But I said I was gonna make this a 24 hour readathon, which I fully intended to do until my stupid ass immediately realized I have four interviews tomorrow, all throughout the afternoon. I can't do those interviews on no sleep. So bad idea. I am gonna go to bed though, so I need to make sure that I'm fully rested before my first interview tomorrow. And I will give you the full update on my thoughts on 13 and my initial impressions of Ascension in the morning. Morning. 
It is 11 a.m. I am just unwinding before, as I mentioned last night, my full day of interviews. I want to give you an update that I ended up staying up until 2 a.m. to read Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates. I got to the 40% mark. The reason why I stayed up so late is because every single chapter ended on something that had me going, and then what? And that just makes it so readable. Like if I didn't have such a busy day today, I easily would have stayed up the entire night to read that book. And as soon as I woke up this morning, literally like 30 minutes later, I started reading it again. So I'm happy to say I'm very, very, very entertained. Although if you're familiar with Darcy Coates books, this is very different to her classic, like cozy-ish horror stuff. This is for sure a, isolated murder mystery with a lot of body horror and like suspense and tension. It is scary and I am really enjoying that aspect of the story and I can't wait to finish it tonight. The other things I wanted to update you on was this book here, Thirteens by Kate Alice Marshall. This is a middle grade story about this girl who moves to this town after something happens, she's now in the custody of her aunt and her uncle, and she is turning 13 on Halloween. However, this town has a history of three 13 year olds disappearing every 13 years. And she starts to suspect that there's something very deeply sinister going on. She meets two students at her new school who are in the same situation. They're both turning 13 on Halloween, so they all have the same birthdays. And it's just very interesting. I would call this like gothic fairy tale almost. Definitely has a lot of fairy tale elements to it, and it is such a fun time. It's very atmospheric, it's very immersive, and it's something that you can very easily visualize. Hey, Alice Marshall does a great job of that. And my inner child was really happy reading that book, but I'm also happy to say that the fully grown adult version of me also really enjoyed this book. It's deeply entertaining, and I give it four stars overall. I did finish it last night. However, be warned that this is a series so as the first book I was listening to it while I was building in The Sims and it was getting to the end but I realized there's no way it could have a satisfying conclusion in the last 20 minutes of the story. I knew it had sequels but it's an ongoing story throughout so that was really a fun time. I've read it over the past several weeks but I finished it during Summerween so I'm counting it. The third book that I started last night when I was still attempting to do 24 hours before I remembered that I was super busy today and actually needed my sleep is Ascension. I wanted to read this because I actually had the library hold finally available. I have been waiting for it for literally like eight plus weeks. It finally came into my hands and this is one of my anticipated 2023 releases, which I want to make sure that I am staying on top of. This book is a situation where a mountain has sprung up in the middle of the ocean, like fully formed mountain within weeks. Something that is quite literally impossible and they're going but this mountain has weird properties and the people who go don't always survive. And if they do survive, they're very, very, very deeply changed by what it is that they experience on that mountain. And I don't just mean like things happen. I mean like literally there's something weird going on and changing these people. Here's how the story opens. We have a brother who's talking about how his brother disappeared like decades ago and they assumed he's dead until one day his friend calls him up and is like, yo, I've seen your brother. I know it's been so many years. He's like 70, but I can still recognize his mannerisms and I'm like almost 100% sure that this is your brother at this mental hospital. He goes there and sure enough it is his brother's and his brother has a bunch of letters detailing what happened on that expedition and how he went missing and how that impacted him and changed him. It's very interesting so far. We've just gotten to the mountain. What I want to say though is that there's this one character who and the scientists are all gathered together, right? And they're like, why, why are we climbing the mountain? We can learn a lot by being at the base of the mountain. And the guy literally says, well, I climbed Mount Everest and now I've heard that there's another mountain that I haven't beat yet. So we're going to go up there. <laughs> I literally heard that in the audiobook and I was like the way I would burst into laughter the way I would scream small dick energy you want to go risk your life 
because you insist that you have to climb a mountain because now you feel like you haven't defeated the tallest mountain in the world. The reason why I bring this up is not only because it was stupid, but because as the reader, I'm going to need more <laughs> convincing that this group of like the most intelligent scientists in the world, the US military, everyone involved is going to climb the mountain because some guy has small dick energy. And that is my update. I am going to be super busy for the next few hours so I probably won't see you until evening where hopefully I will have made more progress in between my meetings. Good morning. It is the final day of Summerween. I did continue reading yesterday but I spent most of the day just hanging out with my nieces and nephew after my interviews were done. So morning update. I am still reading Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates. I am at like the 70% mark. I only have a little bit over 100 pages left and I am still enjoying it but I'll say the middle kind of lagged a little bit because essentially it's the same circumstance over and over which is typical to this kind of situation right a closed circle murder mystery thriller horror kind of situation going on it definitely is scary there is a lot of body horror in here my update at this point is that I think Simone is annoying and that it feels very predictable. I'm very sure that I know who the killer is. Um, I know uh, a lot of things, I think, and I'm being very vague about it because I don't want to spoil it for you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put spoilers and in the next five seconds, I'm going to tell you what I think is happening. Spoilers, you've been warned. If you're going to read this book, if you haven't read it, this is a spoiler, unless I'm wrong, in which case it's not a spoiler. Either way, it would tell you a lot about the story. So we're following Chrissy or Christy, I think, and her boyfriend Kiernan. And they're coming up to this resort for like a romantic getaway. And as they're driving up in this private tour, the van has to stop because there's a tree in the road and Kiernan goes to Christy and says, I wanna show you something amazing. So they go into the woods while the rest of the people are just trying to get this tree out of the road, doing their own thing. And they end up getting lost. And this story opens up with Christy uh her last memory of her boyfriend is that she was falling off a cliff and he was trying to save her and she's very frantic she's trying to find him i'm going to tell you right now the killer is kiernan it's painfully obvious that the killer is kiernan there is a scene where they find kiernan's body on the road but the thing is all the people who have been killed their heads have been put into a tree behind the cabin i know it's very gory kiernan's head was never there and at the beginning of the story our character made two offhand comments about how brian their tour guide had a very very similar like height and stature to her boyfriend kiernan she felt like at some point when she was saved she confused him for kiernan because they have such a similar build Brian's body was never found, but Brian's head was in the tree. Obviously, Kiernan took Brian's body, put his clothes on him so he could people could think that that was Kiernan and he's been killed, and then cut off his hands because he has identifying marks and freckles on his hands. So Brian's hands were shred up so that the rest of the people could think that Kiernan was attacked by an animal and that Kiernan is dead and can't possibly be the one going after them. But I'm like, he's the only one who was killed whose head is not in the tree. And Brian's body is still completely gone and disappeared. Obviously, the body in the road was not fucking Kiernan. It was Brian in Kiernan's clothes. That was the red flag. And the reasoning behind that, I'm fairly certain, is that, wow, this is very, very predictable. I'm just telling you everything. And keep in mind, I have not gotten to the end of the story. I don't know. This is just what I've been able to infer from reading the story. Chrissy mentions that two years ago, she was in a car accident. And in that car accident, the person that was driving was a teenager and that teenager died. Her boyfriend, Kiernan, um, had a very tough upbringing because his brother died in a hit and run accident. And as a result, his father killed himself and his mother kind of fell apart and then up in the mental hospital. I suspect that Kiernan has some feelings about this and knows exactly who Chrissy is and has some thoughts about it. I think that everyone at the cabin has in some way been involved in it. The main person I'm suspecting here is Blake as potentially the 911 operator that was called when this happened. And then of course we have of our character Alexis whose sister was killed and police ruled it suicide but her sister was recently in a relationship with this man who she fought with who 
is no doubt Liam, um, Kiernan's brother who was killed in that hit and run accident. He was driving home very upset and very frantic because of an argument he just had with his girlfriend. That's a very long spoilerly clip. Spoilers are over. That is what I thought. If I am not wrong, then <laughs> this story is very predictable. I'm hoping that I'm wrong in some ways, but I really don't think so. It just feels like painfully obvious exactly what's happening, but maybe that's the point. Maybe Darcy is trying to confuse me. She's like, hey, you think this is what's happening. I'm going to make you think this is what's happening. It's going to feel so obvious to you. And I'm going to go in the end with this crazy twist. And if this crazy twist is what I'm hoping it's going to be, then I'm going to really enjoy it. And if not, it was still a fun thriller for what it was. Surprise, I was right. If you don't watch the spoiler part, you have no idea what I'm right about, but just know I was exactly right. I have finished Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates, as I predicted. Everything I predicted was right. From who it was, to how they got away with it, to why they were doing it, to how all of the people were connected, I guessed every single bit of it, which I will tell you did dampen my enjoyment of it. Not necessarily because I was able to predict it, although I will tell you that is a factor because reading a thriller and knowing exactly what's going to happen takes away some of that suspense. But what I am struggling with here is that the characters in this book were willfully ignoring something that was so painfully obvious something that was such a significant break in the pattern that i was just like y'all all fucking stupid it broke the suspension of disbelief for me because i was like besties this is so obvious the fact that you can't see it makes you think that you're stupid and it feels like you're intentionally not seeing it. With that said, I still love Darcy Coates' writing. I think this was an interesting thriller for her. I know she typically does horror, so this thriller was still very well done. And if you don't read a lot of thrillers or a lot of books within the spooky genre, I think that you're gonna have a good time with this. But ultimately, this was a three to three and a half star book. With that said, I also wanna give you an update on Ascension, which I got 35% of the way into the audiobook while I was out thrift shopping shopping today with my mom I literally had this thought where i was like wow these people are like gaining powers this is like a sci-fi and i was like obviously it's a fucking sci-fi me it's a book about a mountain that mysteriously appears in the middle of the ocean with that said i am still definitely really enjoying the story it is picking up it has a lot of intrigue definitely a lot of sci-fi elements um definitely a lot of suspense in there going on as well it's being told through letters how However, and even though the letters are essentially serving as like flashbacks to the past, I'm not sure if I'm enjoying that element of it. And I'm just waiting for the mountain scene to kind of pick up. I imagine it's going to have some of the similar snowy um, atmosphere as the book that I just read and potentially turn into some kind of thriller. Because what we know so far this early on into the book is that the previous expedition team all died, except for two people. And those two people are not doing well, bestie, not doing well. Those are my updates. It is about 6 p.m. here in New York. And because I'm delusional and because Summerween has been super, super busy for me just because of the volume of interviews that I've had. I'm going to delude myself into thinking that I will be able to finish runtime tonight. This book is, first of all, let me get it for you, chunky, although I think it's like 400 pages. Yeah, a little bit under 400 pages, but if you can see the font is small. There's a lot of words per page and I want to listen to the audiobook, but I can't find the audiobook on anywhere but Audible. It's not in my library. It's not on script. And I don't want to buy this book again. So I'm just going to stick it out and try to read this, but we'll see if that actually happens. You'll get back-to-back -back Summerween vlogs after Summerween is over. I'm 52% of the way through the Ascension. Apologies, you can hear the air conditioner in the background. Even with it on, it's still really fucking hot. And I wanted to just let you know, I am definitely enjoying this. It's super sci-fi, but there is alternating timelines almost. Of course, we have the present timeline where you're reading the letters that tells you the story of what happened on this trip to this mountain that just appeared in the middle of the ocean and the expedition that they went on. But you also have them on the mountain while 
you're in the letters, if that makes sense. And then you have the years leading up to that and what happened in our narrator's life that led to that point. Now, I do think I have a little bit of a sense of what's going on because this mountain has appeared in the middle of nowhere and they've mentioned microbiomes or something like that and one of the characters is describing how the further she got away from the mountain the more confused and she just felt like completely not like herself but on the mountain she does and I'm wondering if there's some kind of like adaptation thing happening or if it's an attack from whatever it is that lives on the mountain but yeah i am enjoying it and i think that at this point i have about an hour and a half left and i'm just doing my little diamond painting which i'll show you now this is what i'm doing while i'm listening to the audiobook unfortunately this did not come with a stupid bead for the letter y so it is blank so i'm just completing the fours and then i'll have to get the color that's the closest to this one to fill in the blanks not this book making me cry what all right it's 11 40 p.m on the final day of summer ween and i did just finish ascension i really enjoyed this that is all i can say i thought this was such a interesting read it's definitely sci-fi horror set on this mountain that just appears in the middle of nowhere it was definitely really fascinating and entertaining and I was surprised by the number of times I like teared up and almost cried in here. Very beautifully written and some of the lines didn't go, wow, that's gorgeous. That is stunning. What I will tell you though, is that it was surprisingly religious, had a lot of religious undertones as well as conversations about religion. Almost a very dark, I don't wanna say negative, cynical view on creation and like, how human life was created and why it was created. I don't know. It was interesting, but perhaps the religious conversations in the text were not necessarily something that I was super into. So just be mindful of that, that it definitely has a lot of religious conversation and religious uh, undertones, but that's not the main point of the story at all. At its core, it is very much horror and it is sci-fi horror which i really enjoyed now i did also start runtime which i got super into almost right away i'm 54 pages into it while i have no doubt that i could make some more progress tonight uh perhaps i was deluding myself earlier today and thinking that i would be able to finish that entire book uh before the end of summerween which would be ending at about 3 a.m eastern time since it ends midnight in my mind pacific standard time it just does i'm gonna see what i'm able to do and then i'll probably give you an update in the morning with my final thoughts and that will be the conclusion of summer week good morning besties i want to give you the update that i did not end up finishing a run time um during that last day of summer ween it was ridiculous for me to think that i could have but the good news is after a fucking full week no full two weeks of interviewing i have my final interview today which means that for the rest of the week i am just going to be reading if you want to hear my thoughts on runtime which i am enjoying you'll have to wait for my july wrap up and i want to give you my thoughts on ascension it's a few days out to be fully transparent and in those days i've think that my perception of ascension is getting more and more positive while it definitely has religious undertones which is not necessarily to my taste i don't agree or disagree or anything i don't really have any thoughts aside from i don't really enjoy religious themes in my fictional book but what i do enjoy is that this is a horror for the people who find the concept of the universe of life and the existence of life and like the meaning of it all um scary <laughs> this is the book for you it will definitely stick with you for that and it was enjoyable for that aspect of me but i wanted to come on and officially end this summer ween vlog here are the prompts for summer ween i thankfully managed to finish all of them i read dead of winter in the dark dead of winter was also a thriller but so is ascension technically so that counts for both prompts 13s by kate alice marshall is a book set in the fall it takes place um on the days leading 
leading up to Halloween and on Halloween. I did not read a manga or novella, a graphic novel, but I did read a book with orange and black on the cover and that of course was The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. As always, I had so much fun doing Summerween. This is, I did my first one in like 2020 or 2021. So it's like my third round of Summerween. I had an absolute blast and as always, thank you to Olivia and to Gabby for hosting Summerween. And I cannot wait for next year, but what's coming up first is hopefully Weekend Ween. So I will see you in my next video. As always, thank you so much for watching and bye. Thank you.